Hey there, Seb Fry the Realtor here. Did you know that the American Society of Landscape Architects says that landscaping can improve your home's value by 15 to 20%? If you're wondering what you can do to come up with a really amazing landscaping system for your home, then you're definitely going to want to watch this video. All right, well, before I get into all that, I first want to say thank you so much for clicking on the link to watch this video. I really do appreciate it. And uh, would you do me one huge favor, though? Would you ring, mash that subscribe button right there and subscribe to my YouTube channel? I would really appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to ding, click that little bell to make sure that you get a notification every time I put up a brand new fun facts filled video kind of like this one. All right, so you know, the American Society of Landscape Architects does say that having great landscaping can increase your home's value by 15 to 20%. And I have no idea where they came up with that number, but I do know that having really great landscaping, terrific outdoor space, especially here in Northern California where the climate is so sublime, it really does tremendously contribute to your overall enjoyment and, and satisfaction with a home. And I know that home buyers really do look for that quality outdoor space when they're out shopping for a property here in the area. So uh, it was uh, of great interest to me to have a chance to sit down and talk with the folks at Yard Zen about what they do. And they help homeowners come up with fantastic landscape designs. They don't actually do the landscaping work, they just do the design, but they do it for a fraction of what you would normally pay a traditional landscape architect design firm. Um, so I think that you are going to find this interview with uh, Yard Zen to be really very educational. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Hey everybody, uh, today I am joined by Kevin Lenhart. Uh, Kevin works for Yard Zen and uh, he is a uh, landscape designer with uh, Yard Zen. And uh, today we're going to be talking with Kevin about all the amazing things that Yard Zen uh, does uh, for their clients. So, Kevin, thank you so much for making the time to join me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure to be here. All right. So, um, I'm guessing a lot of people haven't really heard about Yard Zen yet. So uh, could you take a minute or two and tell us, uh, you know, what Yard Zen is, where you are located and, and what exactly you do or what markets you serve? Yeah, sure, sure. So, so Yard Zen is the leading online landscape design and build company. And the company mission essentially is just to help people live a better life outside uh, what we do is offer an end-to-end -end solution to landscaping by connecting homeowner, homeowners with vetted landscape designers and contractors and considering their budget, their style preferences, the unique site conditions, how they want to live in their space, what their functional goals might be, considering all those factors and then generating a design and then helping them get that design built by connecting them with a contractor. Um, okay. So, so yeah. do you work everywhere? I mean, everywhere coast to coast or? So we operate um, throughout all 50 states and uh, our, our team is, uh, our team is composed of remote, remote people all over the country. Okay. All right. So uh, that sounds terrific. So, uh, you know, I'm uh, based in the Bay Area. So uh, you have ample coverage here in the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah, we do that. So the, the company is headquartered in Sausalito. Oh. And uh, yeah, and so we uh, were founded there. That's no that's wonder why you guys are so hip and cool then. That explains that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um so what's the difference between like like why would I call like yards in versus just like a regular landscape design company? Like what do you guys do that maybe other other companies don't do? Yeah, so the, and there's a quick little origin story here that kind of helps to explain that difference. Um, the founders are a married couple and they had a house in Calistoga that was affected by the Tubbs fire in 2017. It didn't burn their home down, they were lucky for that, but it did burn their yard and they called the landscape architecture firm, a traditional practice to redesign their yard and were kind of shocked by how expensive that process was gonna be. And that's where they got the idea for Yard Zen that to be able to offer design and all of the benefits that it unlocks for people at a price point that would be accessible to, to more people. Um, so 
what Yard's End does is by working all online, we cut out a lot of, we cut out a huge amount of expense. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's essentially was created as an alternative to the time and cost intensive process of landscape design as it is traditionally practiced. Um, this empowers homeowners and designers with technology working online. We have design platforms for them to flow through that gathers all the information we need to, uh, to allow our designers to create top-notch designs for them. Okay. All right. That sounds great. So what's that design process like? I mean, if you're like a virtual company, if I hire like a landscape uh you know design company they'll come out to my space and like you know i'll meet with them mm -hmm. we'll sit down and you know they'll how, how does that work if you are you know uh in the virtual space right right so it's a it's a very good question there's a there's a set sequence that there are that our clients go through and we've refined this over the years and it works really really well for us um the first thing that happens after you purchase a yards end design package is you go to what we call our yard builder. Um, and it's essentially an onboarding exercise. When you're going through the yard builder, you share photos and videos, you share inspiration images to give us a feel for what you're looking to see. Uh, you answer a couple questions let, to let us know about your preferences, how you hope to use your outdoor space, and you take a style quiz. After you've completed that, then we generate a house model. And that house model is, we share that with you by sharing a couple uh, 3D images of it, give you a chance to react, make sure it's okay. That house model becomes essentially the canvas that we build your design upon. Um, after you get that house model about a week after you submit your materials through the yard builder. Then three to four weeks after the house model, you would get your first design iteration. Uh, we share that design iteration initially by giving you really highly detailed photorealistic 3D full color renderings. Um, those renderings are super useful, especially to people who are not well versed in looking at you know a 2D plan construction drawing because they bring the space to life. They give you an understanding of what it would feel like to move around in that space. Um, once you get that first design iteration, clients get an opportunity to share feedback with us about that. They can share feedback online. They can also speak with us directly on a call. There's, we want to make it easy for, for you to share your feedback. And so we have a couple of different methods available to people to do that. Um, once we get the feedback, we get to work on the second and final iteration of the design. It, that one also is delivered using 3D renders, but we also throw in two-dimensional plan drawings, uh, which would show exactly which plant species to put where, the dimensions of your, and materials that we use in all your new design features. Um, those plans come in super handy once clients move from this design phase into the build phase where they would connect with a contractor. And that's the next step. We, we offer pro matching where we would connect our clients who have completed the design part of the journey. Uh, and we would connect them with a contractor who's part of our network, who they're all vetted, licensed, insured, and only remain in our network if they remain highly reviewed by our clients and are continuing to produce exceptional work. Um, those the clients then work directly with a contractor to go through cost estimation and scheduling and get their design built. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds terrific. Um, but I'm wondering, like, what if the clients have like some specific, like, you know, needs or taste or styles, or like, they just have some ideas that are just like totally out of the box. I mean, like, can you accommodate that kind of stuff? Cause I mean, a lot of people are pretty creative around here. <laughs> yeah, sure. you know they might have some you know uh some non-mainstream ideas for how they want their uh their landscaping to look how do you work with that well honestly like we love it the the it, who wants to design the same thing day in and day out right yeah it's uh when our and our clients bring a really diverse set of requests to us it's true that a lot of people want to see the same things in their yards you know we get a lot of 
Uh, people are looking for a dining area, a, a gathering space, place for their kids to play, pay, place to relax. These things are, are common, but they're not all that we do. Um, clients can bring any request to us. If we can't do it, we will let you know right away. Um, but we want, like our ultimate goal is to get people outside and help them take greater advantage of their outdoor spaces. That's what we want to do. And if they have a specific set of circumstances, like a very challenging yard or a specific set of requests, like they happen to really be into some something that most clients wouldn't be, they want to build a custom this or that, we can we are going to do whatever we can to help accommodate them. And if it's not something that we're able to accommodate, we're going to, we're going to let them know and try to help them figure out a solution for what they ought to do instead. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, I think a lot of people have uh, pretty big imaginations and one thing that stops them, I think from uh, implementing their imaginations is, is the cost uh, of, you know, I mean, like if you have a big backyard, I imagine it can be pretty expensive. What, what kind of factors really influence the cost of a, of a yard's end design? It's a really good question. And the short answer is a lot of things. Um, your, the regional climate and geography, your specific site conditions, like can you get construction equipment in your backyard? What is tree cover like? How intense are your slopes if you have any? Um, what plants are you hoping to get? And how mature are you hoping the plants to be when you go to purchase them? Um, how much hardscaping, how much softscaping, all of these things bear influence on the final total cost of a project. Um, that said, we've we've seen it all at this point. We've designed thousands of yards. We've you know uh, at a whole range of budget scales, and we've we understand how to adapt to that whole spectrum. Um, at the beginning of the yards and design process, when when clients are going through the yard builder exercise, we provide budget information as the clients are going through selecting the different features they may or may not want us to include in the design. That way, as they're telling us, okay, I'm thinking about adding a deck, I'm thinking about adding a fire pit, this or that, they can be keeping track of the running rough approximated total of those different features. So we want everybody to be aligned on the same page as to what the approximate expected costs would be for your design. And it's important to note that when you're in the design phase, you can't pinpoint to the penny when you're, when you're aiming for a cost total. Prices really get real when a contractor steps into the scene, but we definitely can aim with a good amount of accuracy for, for a price target and definitely and consistently do give our clients designs that are hitting a, a budget number that is going to be in the ballpark of what they need to be able to action on their design. We want them to have a design that they can build. We don't wanna give them something that's pie in the sky that they'll never be able to implement. We want this to be real. So, so we emphasize budget from the, from the outset and throughout the entire design process to make sure everybody's aligned. That must be pretty challenging because I imagine it costs uh, a lot more to do the same backyard in Los Gatos versus in Texas somewhere. <laughs> Funny you should say that because I grew up in Los Gatos and I live in Texas. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, that is funny. <laughs> yeah, that is. I you know, just throw that one out there. Um, you're right. And so we, in our price calculations, we do take, you know, when we are approximating prices, we're taking regional difference into account, but you can only, that's still painting with a very big brush, right? You can't get you can only get granular to a point. Um, site conditions are going to be the single most impactful determinant on how, how expensive a project is gonna be. If you can't get construction equipment into a yard and the client is looking to terrace, that's gonna be exponentially more money than if you could get a bobcat back there. So there's things like that that just have a huge impact so that so every single project is different. Um, and, and we, we know how we know that from our own experience, you know, it, it was, it, 
it's uh it it you have to be looking comprehensively at all of the things that impact the budget as you're going through the design well i imagine it must get pretty tricky like let's say like they have a backyard and they and they don't want to like just rip the whole thing out they want to keep certain things the heritage tree the bougainvillea yeah. the mm -hmm. you know whatever the outdoor kitchen they already have it must be pretty complicated to like work around an existing plan like that i could imagine yeah it, yes and no i mean it just depends on how complex it is uh there are so many reasons for hanging on to existing stuff you know as an advocate for sustainability i am always encouraging clients to consider what they can keep because often the most sustainable thing you can do is nothing you know <laughs> so uh, so it's uh and or you know making minor adaptations to existing features can be a good thing from a sustainability perspective from a cost perspective and from an aesthetic perspective it's you know we want clients to spend money where it will have the biggest impact so it it i really that's something i really enjoy about my day-to-day -day job as the design director at yards and i get to connect with our clients and help them prioritize what they're working on um or, or rather prioritize the different elements within the design they're hoping to, to have us create um and say like you know fancy paving in your side yard that you never use maybe skip that and dump that money into this this multi-purpose entertainment area that's going to be at the nucleus your, of your backyard you know it doesn't it, it can seem like a no-brainer but it's it's not always clear when you're when you're in the thick of it you know so you guys provide that kind of guidance to people like okay we got 50 grand you know like let me help you spend that money cost effectively and still do what you want so that's the designers the designers are typically making those decisions and they're making them in response to what the clients have shared with us but the the vast majority of clients um are are the the, the way that the flow typically works with information is the clients share it through us at at set points in the process right they go through the yard builder that's the first point then they receive their design then they go then they submit feedback through our online feedback studio and then they receive the second design um some clients do opt to to uh purchase a call and they can jump on a call with us um so and then with with those clients i could i or somebody else maybe speaking directly with them um so there's there's a couple different ways that that communication could happen but even if it's not even if uh, it's not directly over the phone, say, or directly over a Zoom meeting, that exchange of guidance is still happening insofar as the clients are telling us this and our designers are exercising their professional skill based on the inputs that the clients have given us to say, okay, here's going to be the design that is most cost effective, most cost effective for you while achieving your goals and the style that you're hoping for. Okay. And so how long does something like this take from like, uh, from like the time they first log on to the time that they that they're ready to take the design out to bid for the contractors? How long does that typically take? Yeah, on average, it's about six weeks to complete uh, from the time clients go through onboarding and submit their materials to when they have the final design in hand. Um, within that first seven days of submitting their materials and going through the yard builder process, our team is going to be off and running working on the design. Um, so the design, generally speaking, they're going to receive that first one within two to three weeks of purchase. Then they leave their feedback. Then the, that then it's going to be about two more weeks till they get that second design iteration. Um, so, or that's going to be happening in weeks four through five. So the design is generally delivered. The second draft design will be delivered around week six. Um, now that clients get as long as they want to submit feedback, which is why I'm saying like it typically takes six weeks because sometimes clients will take a little longer to submit their feedback. Other clients are chomping at the bit and do it right away. But, you know, people have different levels of, uh, of need to, to move quickly or slowly through the 
process. So that affects how quickly the designs are developed, but the turnaround is going to be, uh, it's going to be um, about four weeks for that first design and two weeks for the second one, roughly speaking. So the purpose of that first design is for people to like request revisions. Is that kind of like what that first design is for? Yeah, I talk a lot about how, look, if you've got ideas, let's test drive them, especially in that first design. So you we, you throw stuff against the wall and then, and then they receive that first design and they will react to it and um, and then you revise based on how you how you feel about that first design. People approach it in a few different ways, right? Like some people want to be very precise and they say, and, and, or they want to start small, say, you know, and they want to, they want to take like, okay, let's aim for the lower end of my budget spectrum in this first iteration. And then they'll get the design and they'll see it and they'll say, that's perfect. Or they'll say, you know, I'd actually like to see you throw in a few more bells and whistles and let's, let's aim for the higher end of my budget spectrum. And then we'll do that in the second iteration. So it can go, it can flow in either direction in terms of shrinking or, uh, or expanding the scope of features that you're including in the design from one iteration to the next. But the the main the the function that it all hinges on is that once you get that first set of renders, it really helps you react on more of a gut level than just a brainy one, right? Like to see the three D renders in color of your design helps you. It, it it helps you to test drive the design. Essentially, you're experiencing it in a way that's a little more visceral or visceral than just thinking about, oh, I think I would like a fire pit. You know, you actually see the thing and it helps you un to understand on a gut level, do I really want this or not? And that's what you base your feedback on. So you said, you know, like the first first design, like how many iterations of a design are there? Are there just the two or is it, I mean, like... Yeah, the standard yards and package comes with two iterations of the design. We do offer an Uber premium package that, that comes with three iterations. Um, clients... Uh, so, so that's so those those clients that opt for the premium package get three iterations standard. Okay, all right, um, all right. So, uh, what happened? What what options do the clients have once they get their design from you? Like, what what are their next steps? I mean, like, are you going to hook them up with a variety of different contractors to get bids, or I mean, because right. also like, how, when can the contractors do the work? You know, I mean, um, mm -hmm. how, how does that work? Yeah, so. Most yards and clients end up just getting matched with one contractor. And that's not because we're trying to be stingy with the contractors at all. It's just because that that contractor is usually the right fit. We have an entire team within the company that is dedicated to that process of what we call pro matching, where and what they do is once the design is complete, they look at the design and all the different features that it entails. And then they look at our network of pros within the within the area around that project, and they pick the pro that they think is going to have is going to be the best fit in terms of skill set and everything else. And they put that pro in touch with the client, and then they're off and running. If the client for some reason is not happy with the pro, they can reach back out to us, and then we help them on an individual level, often connecting them with a different contractor. Um, we also offer free bid review. So if, you know, oftentimes the reason clients would want to connect with multiple contractors is to be able to compare multiple bids and get the, find the best deal for themselves. But really they're just, you don't necessarily want to aim for the cheapest bid, right? Anybody who's done that and gotten shoddy work on their property has learned the hard way. Um, if you want a bid that is, that is giving you good prices, but is also uh, prom is also indicating that the work is going to be done in a high quality manner that's going to endure and be a good long term investment, and not require replacement soon. So, we offer that bid the uh, bid review service free of charge to basically give an objective review of a bid that a client may receive from the contractor that we connected them with, so that client can know, hey. These, these prices are aligned with general average market values or they're inflated or they're too low. Um, we don't want our client to get a bad deal. 
So if if they we've done that before, where we've received a bid and said, "Oop, you know this this is maybe a little high here," and we can put them in touch with another contractor. So what if a client wants to bring their own contractor? Yeah, that's totally pop. That's totally fine. We don't want anybody to be <laughs> to be in. You know, we're not trying to force anybody into a situation they don't want to be in, right? Oftentimes, clients will have say a family connection, right? I had a, I, um, and they know somebody who does concrete. So they may, then they'll just adjust the scope of the con. So they would connect with the yards and contractor to handle all of their design, except for the concrete. And then their family friend would handle the concrete. They, you can adjust the scope of your build work with the yards and contractor to suit whatever your individual needs are. Well, what if they, I mean, can they hire you just for the design purely and just say, you know what? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. They, they yeah. can, yeah. It's just, essentially the pro matching service is there to save clients the stress and time of trying to find a contractor on their own, which is, it's significant. It's, it, if any, you know, you, I'm sure you've had that experience. Trying to find a contractor and vetting through several of them is, a lot of work and not necessarily really fun. Um, so we wanted to take that off of people's plates to basically cut that part of the process that can be very time consuming and often end up being like the impediment that people can't get past. We wanted to remove that so they can move immediately from the design studio into construction and get down to the business of having their design being installed and actually living in their new space so how about do you have that design that that bid review for like people who are not in your network like maybe they have you to do the design and then they they you know <clears throat> their neighbor says oh you have to use the guy who did my backyard i mean mm -hmm. could you review that guy's bid for your design or you know i i believe that yeah they would do that yeah they they reviewed basically if you if if the if the client brings us a bid, we will we will review it and let them know if it seems fair. Um, but we what we do when the client works with our in-network contractors is we essentially remain in the background, ready to help out throughout the entire build installation. We're kind of we're in the corner of the ring. So if there's if they're going through build and they realize a design detail needs to be updated, say a, the width of a stair and it should, should change and they need that documented in their CAD plans, they can reach out to us and we'll, we'll adjust their plan drawings. That's not a problem. Or if they're just stuck trying to figure out, hey, it, look, it turns out there's, there's a utility cover here that we have to, to work around. What do you suggest? They can reach out to us and we can help we can help quickly brainstorm a solution with them working in concert with them and their contractor to get them unstuck so they can keep keep moving forward with the build because if you're in the middle of an install and you pause the, it's it's costing you money so you want to you want to get out of those situations as quickly as you can and so that is something you only do with your uh people, with your network. network contract yeah yeah in network contract. That, that level of build support is part of the advantage of, of working with an in-network contract uh, working with an in-network the, the other main advantage of the in-network contractors that i want to point out is that they're all they're all licensed and vetted um they they only make it into our network if they are a uh, documented documented excellent work, top-notch online reviews. They have the full spectrum of uh, insurance for workers' comp, employers' liability, commercial general, auto, professional, all of that, so that everything is very much above board. They're licensed and vetted. Um, and they they provide exceptional customer service. They have good personality. They're nice people to spend time with and work with. All these things have to be in place for them to be invited to join our network. And they have to maintain all of those, those factors in order to stay within the network. So we have, we've developed really excellent relationships with our contractors because they're, they're, they're great professionals and they're a pleasure to work with and our clients enjoy working with them. Okay. So, um, you know, we're talking about outdoor spaces and the outdoors have always been unpredictable, but they're getting a lot less predictable these days. I mean, we've gone through 
droughts and heat waves to now we're having here in the Bay Area, just monsoons, right? A lot of people are having issues with flooding and drainage and like trees falling over. So how do you how do you make a design that like, you know, incorporates, you know, all these different like drainage is like a huge problem now, like retaining walls and, you know, just like, you know, French I mean, do you guys, I mean, how do you, how do you account for all of that? I mean, how can you account for all of that in the design, especially if you don't ever come to the site? Yeah. So there are certain things that, that we design, uh, that we were, that we lean on our designers to take care of. And there's other things that we lean on our contractors to take care of. Um, basically, uh, so something like drainage, for example, drainage is affected by a half a percent slope, which is not something that we can really accurately measure at this point working online. But that's not a problem because contractors, the landscape contractors in our network do drainage in their sleep. They do it every day. <laughs> it's, it is a, it's an easy thing for them to take care of. We've bit, they, they have basically directly told us like, hey, don't, don't try, don't move into our lane here. We got this. We're pros at drainage. So they handle it and it works. We have not had any problems with that. So, so we develop a design and then the contractors plug in the drainage around our design. In terms of designing for erratic weather, right? Or designing with the Street general heat. effect the general effects of climate change in mind, right? Like we want, so we want to create shade spaces. That's quite possibly the number one request we get is how I need more outdoor shade. Um, so we have a variety of solutions that we that we would bring to that request. It would just depend on the site conditions and the client's goals and budget and style. And, you know, do we use shade trees? Are we going to use a structural shade solution? So there's a lot of ways to, to go about that. Um, you want to identify any, uh, you, well, you're going to want to use planting that is, that is uh, be respectful of the climate in terms of water consumption. So throughout the West, low water planting is a really big deal, um, not only for kind of the greater good and trying to conserve water, but also because of restrictions that are being placed at, throughout the West on water consumption and uh, rebates that are being offered for things like lawn removal to, to help reduce irrigation. So um, we are always designing our planting with a view to biodiversity, water conservation, and climate change in mind. We're balancing those factors against the client's the client's goals and requests and style. Um, but that that is something that all our designers are well-versed in and that we highly prioritize on the whole. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, that's, that's really important. Um, yeah. So I mean, you... that's why I'm here basically is to, <laughs> I, 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 Yards End has such, you know, working with so many clients, we have such incredible potential to do something meaningful for sustainability in turn, you know, getting people to have yards that use less water, that provide more habitat, that's, um, that, that have greater tree canopy to help reduce uh, heat islands, to have more permeable surfaces, to soak more water in. We help our clients do all of those things and it makes their yards more sustainable on the whole, but like taking permeable surfaces and tree canopy, for example, that's a great way also to help mitigate your flood risk on your property. If you because you you detain water in the canopy, the roots from the tree help water permeate into the soil more quickly. So you and that eventually just helps the water get down into the ground on your property, which is what you want. So it doesn't flood your municipal drains. So there's there's a lot we there's a lot that goes. That's a big, it's a big hairy question you asked there, and it's a really good one. And there's a lot that goes into it, but we are laser focused on it. Okay, terrific. So um, let's say that I, like I'm right now looking out at my backyard right now, <clears throat> I'm thinking like, where do I even begin, right? Like yeah, what, right. <laughs> what, what are the, what are the initial steps? I mean, to, to work with you guys, what, how does that actually like walk me through it? So, so the initial steps, I mean, it's kind of like we were talking about earlier, right? Like you buy the, you buy your package, 
and that kicks everything off. And then the first thing you're going to do is go through Yard Builder. And maybe we can talk a bit more about what that initial Yard Builder is. Yeah, what is Yard Builder? You mentioned that several times. Yeah, Yard Builder is is basically our, our proprietary method and process that happens online in your Yard Zen account that is the process that forms the foundation of your design journey. So in the Yard Builder, you are going to be sharing with us all of your functional goals, your style goals, uh, well, a whole bunch of detail about your property. Um, so let's just talk about those three factors, your functional goals and style goals. You'd write, you, could, you would write them down. You'll also upload inspiration images. Um, inspiration images, people take, take images from online. They take photos of places they've been or their neighbor's yards even whatever it is that you like. And when you upload those images, you're giving us a little a little description to go along with them to tell us, hey, take a look at this deck or take a look at this paving or this planting. I really like that. And that helps to helps us to build a complete, a more complete understanding of what it is you're hoping to see. So we get we get all this content from you. Uh, about what you're hoping to see, but we also get you to take photo photographs and video of your yard. If you have any planned drawings like surveys or plat maps, you can upload those, but they're definitely not required at all. So that shouldn't be a concern if you're, you know, if you're like, oh, I had a survey and it's buried in my attic somewhere. I don't know where it is. Don't worry about it. We don't need it. It's okay. It's, it's a nice to have. But, um, but we do get the site photos and site videos, and those are extremely helpful. Um, some clients choose to narrate their site videos, which I personally love, um, because it helps, again, for us to get a little more of a nuanced understanding uh, as to what they are hoping to see and what they are thinking about when they're, when they're looking at their landscape and talking about their landscape. Um, you know, as a designer, you kind of need to get in somebody's head to help to be able to make decisions in the manner that they would as you're going through the design process. So by referencing all this information that our clients share in the yard builder, that we're able to do that. And that that's what our designers do. So they refer to all this stuff. The clients tell us, keep this, keep this, remove this, remove this. I like this style. I, I want this function across their whole yard. And that cumulatively forms essentially a set of instructions that go to our designer and that that is what they use to create their designs. So um, what does it cost to like uh, get like a uh, yard designed by you guys? I imagine there's like a kind of a, like a broad array of co costs or can you give me a, sort of a ballpark idea like my backyard, like my lot is like 14,000 square feet. My backyard is probably a good, you know, 10,000 square feet, maybe something like that. So, or at least like eight or 9,000 square feet of basically a rectangle. Like what does something mm -hmm. like that cost to like? Yeah, so we have a range of packages um, that, that cover different design scopes. So you can get our botanical package, which is plants only. And that's starting at 895. Um, mm -hmm. If to get a front yard only package is 1095. One of our most popular packages is the full yard. So that's your front. It's basically your whole property. That's 1695. Um, the if you include exterior design, which is uh, then then that can that adds an additional cost, but it expands the um, it you can get the full property plus your home exterior, and that would be 2495. Um, wow, that's actually really cheap. It's it's a fraction of what you would pay. It's a fraction. For. And that's wow. what I find that is the other big motivation for me. At, that's why I I was working at I was happy as a clam working as at a traditional firm and I joined Yards End because I saw this potential. Like to good design lets people it's it. I like the aesthetics, but for me, it's much more about what you can do in the space, right? I want people to be able to live their lives outside and like do all the things that they want to do. And good design facilitates that. And everybody deserves that facilitation. So if you make design at this more affordable price point, you're helping so many more people 
take advantage of the spaces rather than be like you were saying, like, where do I begin? <laughs> you know, people people get frozen and, and end up with these yards that are just kind of a burden and don't get used. They just think of it as like something they occasionally have to weed and mow and it's kind of a, a pain. You, people should be outside enjoying those spaces. So make, keeping design at these low costs makes that possible, which I think is just like so wonderful. Well, it's like Steve Jobs said, you know, design is not how it looks, it's how it works, right? You know, yeah. and... Uh, that's very true i think for your backyard you know the thing about the pandemic that, though, that i would add is that looks are critical to it working if it's an ugly space you're not going to want to spend time in it so it's absolutely essential that the design looks great and is a space that you want to be immersed in so it, to me it, the the appearance of a yard is as it it's it is just one more functional functional factor along with having gathering spaces and good circulation and all of that right um it it has to look good just to, to stick around for the client to be willing to invest in it right and and to be inviting right exactly and um you know once the pandemic hit you know i i never spent so much time in my backyard uh until the pandemic hit, yeah. right? Then I spent yeah. like lived in my backyard for like nine months or whatever. It was amazing, actually. Um, and that's actually really terrific because I mean, like, really, I mean, your services are so affordable. I mean, I'm surprised, honestly. I mean, I mean, you're saving thousands of dollars, which that actually gets you quite a long ways, you know, to you know, getting your design actually built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a really great opportunity for homeowners at at all different price points. Yeah, it's uh, very exciting. Is there like a gallery where people can go and like look at some of your designs online or? There is, yeah. You actually can go to yardzen, yardzen.com slash gallery. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. <laughs> yardzen.com slash gallery. And is yeah. that broken down kind of like by geography or how does that, how does can, that work? Yeah, well, they you can search, you know, you can search by your, um, you know, just do a control F of your city. There's, it indicates where each design is, okay. is from as well. But we routinely get images taken from our gallery used as inspiration images in our yard builder exercise. Oh. So uh, it's it's a very useful tool, to be honest, for clients to help articulate their design goals. You know, just take a look through the gallery, grab some things you like, and that can really help us get the conversation started about what we can do with your yard. Right. Terrific. All right. Well, that is very uh, interesting. And uh, maybe I'll be calling yards and have you guys come out and look <laughs> at my yard. It's looking a little shabby these days. So uh, before we wrap up, is there anything else uh, that I didn't ask you maybe that you want to like bring to people's attention? Uh, no, I mean, other than just we're we're very excited and and really feel like uh, you know it's that it, this is a wonderful opportunity for homeowners and we we love what we do and uh, and I you know I think that I think that shows up in the work. Yeah, terrific. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to tell uh, everybody I know about it. Um, you know, I, I think it's a tremendous service and. I, that's really affordable too. That really is. Um, I'm surprised how how affordable it is. So, well, listen, Kevin, thank you so much for joining me today. I, I really appreciate it, and um, I look forward to talking with you uh, some more down the road. Yeah, thanks so much. It's been wonderful. Have a great day. All right, you too. See you later. Bye. All right. Well, that's it for that. I really hope that you did enjoy watching that video. And if you did enjoy watching, I'm guessing you might also enjoy some of these videos over here. These are some of the most popular videos here on my YouTube channel. So please do check those out. And don't forget to subscribe. I would really appreciate it if you would. Hey, that's it for this video. Thank you so very much for watching and please stay tuned.